Welcome to a new episode of GNU Linux Game Hacker. Today I'm going to show you how to use VNTs to your advantage. So I'm going to start with a little example uh, with classes, with especially classes that use abstraction, abstract classes. Um, <clears throat> so in C++ you have virtual methods and virtual methods uh, allow you to be uh, to be used in a derived class so here we have player which which derives the entity class and you can overwrite a uh, virtual method uh, in a derived class such that if you have a pointer that only refers to the main class and has no uh, information about which class it's from actually it's from the player class but I could have another class that derives entity and still have entity pointer uh, but basically if I call int uh, get health here uh, it's going to show us the it's going to call this function right it's, uh, it's not going to call the function from entity even though it's an entity pointer because this function is not defined this is what the equal zero means uh, after the definite after the declaration of the method and this is what's called a pure virtual method or function so I'm going to compile this little example like this and I'm going to open it in GDB and you're going to see that the way how the program is actually uh, able to know which function which method to call when we call a uh, method from the base base class if we call get name how it does it know that we're calling the one from player even though this pointer does not as uh, whole information to what specific class uh, points to because actually we could not initialize an entity cannot construct an entity uh, variable because it would not be valid because of these two methods that are not defined so i'm going to place a breakpoint on the main function and i'm going to start it so next next okay so now it has in this initialized to, to print the entity uh okay it doesn't really have any information like this if we cast it to a player now we have more information that shows up but of course uh classes like this uh you should not know about them uh when you're reading the, when you're using gdb on a uh, on a game because on a game or program this information would not be known because obviously it would be obfuscated or just not exported. In this case, uh, the default is to not export it I mean, on most games. So this is information that we do not have access to. But as um, as I as which oh okay, kid. But basically, uh, if we type this, uh, if we actually try to call, so let's cast. No, let's not cast it, but. Oh, actually we can call i think um functions directly from gdb so if called entity and uh, get health um oh yeah it calls the right function uh even though the end it's just an entity and there's no function i mean the function here is invalid and it now if you type that's a really interesting thing it's how does it know this uh, how which function to call it's what's called vtables so info vt vtbl uh, and then the member and now you have um, vtable for entity sub object so as you can see um, here we have uh, structures uh, and then we have get name and get health uh, the structures are important when you have uh, pure virtual functions because when you have uh, when you're dealing with abstract classes because uh here i have this end that uh that does not know which um of course if i if it doesn't have a virtual destructor then the same thing happens it does not know which destructor to call upon all of the structures from the derived classes that derive entity and so it needs to be virtual to be called so it's it, it should always be a virtual destructor uh, unless your object is uh, trivially destructible. Anyway, 
So here we have what's interesting. And as you can see, this is actually a table. It's an array memory where you have all of the functions uh, linked with uh, our specific version uh, um, class that overrides entity. So in this case, it's the player class. And so we have the one from player. All right, so I've set up a uh, more complex example. Now I added a monster class that also uh, derives uh, the entity class. And if I compile this program, I created a new another instance of entity of monster uh, and I cast it to entity pointer and I give it to the ENT2. Um, yeah, returning, oh, I mean, this is bad practice anyway. Um, so if I run it in GDB, I can create a point and I can run the file next, next, next. Okay, now if I print ENT2, it's the same thing happens. Now, what if I cast ENT2 to the wrong, um, the wrong class? So as you can see, I cast it to player and now there's an error that shows up m name it cannot read this variable okay because um uh it says it as addresses uh address zero zero uh, zero x zero which is not valid for a string of course or a pointer or whatever so this is not right but if i cast it to let's say monster now it seems to work there's no error of course because uh, that's what it corresponds to there's no field or name actually here we have to edit another string with different meaning. If, uh, if we added another data type, it would have been a different thing. Here. Maybe it would have printed something, but maybe not uh, formatted correctly because it would have think it would have thought it's a string actually. So uh, if I run the same comment as before, info vtbl monster or oh, ent2, it's uh, on the instance. Now you can see. At this time, the table is similar to the one from the player from the player object, but it calls the monster version of the function. And actually, if you look uh, into, I don't know, monster, uh, maybe not monster, but if you look, yeah, if you look into the addresses here, um, they are different because it's not it's not the same function. So if we uh, disassemble this get name function here, we, sh we get this, this is symbol. This is something, yeah. Now, if it disable this symbol, this one will get a different one uh, because it needs to put on the stack or allocate for uh, the monster string whatsoever. While here, it just returns a reference to a string, so it's just a really straightforward method. Um, so this is this is the the interesting part is how does it know. Um, which table uh, does ENT1 corresponds to and which table does ENT2 corresponds to. And uh, actually it's been shown before, but if I print ENT1, as you can see, it has, even though this one has no data type, no members, no whatsoever, there is, um, it has this, which is the big table for player. Now, if I do it on ENT2, it has this, which is big table for monster. Now, if I cast it to the, it's cast it to the right type. Uh, now, as you can see here, this field, which I didn't talk about before, um, is actually the address of the table. And I can show you this. Uh, as you can see, the address here is the same as this one. This is actually the address of the table in memory where it is located um, this. Um, this table. So if I maybe I can print it. Okay. Um, now it's not. I, I mean, it's not going to be really interesting to do that. But uh, now that we know this, if we do something like ENT one. Uh, so actually, uh, I'm thinking maybe we should have something different. Though. So here we should return the double. Okay. Just, just to show the difference. Uh, uh, plus plus e run oh and the correct dot run okay so now if I call int2 get health 
Okay, it prints 200, even though uh, int2 actually has only 100 health, which just doubles the region value. So if here I type uh, monster, as you can see, the M health uh, gets doubled. Now, the same thing happens with player, by the way, but it's 100. So it prints the health, the real health value it does not double. And actually, if we, uh, if we were to look at the offset of each member, this uh, is not at first. Uh, this is not offset zero this is offset eight or four depending on your architecture but here it's eight because this is a eight that's eight byte uh, pointer so uh if we were to uh you overwrite the first the pointer at the beginning of uh this uh object by the pointer at the beginning of the other object we're going to see what happens when we do this i don't know if this is going to compile yeah i need to include c string of course all right so now if i run it in gdb uh break point oh okay so after the mmcpy has happened now if i print the um monster uh int one okay now if i print the one for a uh, player now as you can see it points to the table of monster now and the interesting fact about this is if we call uh int one as you remember before it was printing was using this function right here but now it should be using uh, the one from the monster big table so if we type get health okay now it prints 200 and if i you can actually see that it's working if i said now if i print once again i call this function now it says 20 so it doubled uh, this value so let me yeah so now it has to 10 and doubles it because it calls this function right here because we've changed the pointer for the v table and now um basically the the way v tape the way virtual methods work on most implementation and the one used by gdp by gcc but also the one used on more compilers such as uh, msvc is it is that the first member is actually kind of a member that's not displayed here actually we could see this if we type size of um player would see that it's not just a string and an integer but basically uh there's a there's a data member that that is a pointer to table in memory so it adds just eight byte four byte uh per data structure per members and this is how it knows which function which method that we want to call when we call virtual method uh if it's one from player with one from monster based on this point right here and basically when you call a function a method it, instead of calling uh, directly the method it it knows the offset and it calls the method at offset uh, at the offset in the big table so this is actually a fairly smart mechanism that's why it's simply it's the, the one that's used in by most implementation of virtual uh, objects because it's efficient and it's fast and easy to implement. Okay, now I've set up another last example. Uh, so here I want to overwrite in the vtable um, the get health method by this get health custom. So one thing you have to know is that different instances of the player class will actually share the same vtable. This is to save some resources. Of course, each could have their own V table, uh, but this would be a waste because each V table should be strictly identical. Here, we're going to modify the V table for all of the player classes, all of the player instances, by, by overriding the one that we have with ENT1. So, the way we do this is first we get a V table address, then we store the address of our custom function and then we use mcpy in the right offset to overwrite it so what we can do is we can just compile and if one our program we'll see something strange happens it crashes oh 
And if we run it in GDB, we can see that it crashes at this instruction right here. And the reason for this is that by default, for safety reasons, the tables are stored in read-only memory. It's memory that's not meant to be executable because it's a table and it's also not meant to be writable. So the way we fix this is actually by making this memory region writable. I'm going to show you how to... All right, so now I've used the mProtect function to make the part of memory that contains the table writable. I can show you just the manual mProtect. And as you can see, basically you have the protection flags right here. You also have the function. And also you have this node, which is that uh, when you pass the value, a group must be aligned with page boundary. And to make this easier, I just created this no brain function that retrieves the page size. So you need the uni std, and of course, you need sys man for m project. This gets basically the smallest page range uh, that contains your address in the size. So, page size of my system is four kilobytes. Mm. So basically it just gets uh, the page because uh, you're only in a single page for this that contains all of this. It's something you have to do. You can do it manually, but this function does it for you. So why not? And it makes this writable. I can show you what happens if I don't align or if I, if I don't use mProtect, it's going to crash anyway. Here, instead of using MCPY, I'm just using this can revert to MCPY, but this is just another way that works too. Okay, so now I'm just going to compile and run it. And now you can see, so it prints zero because that's the return, return value. Zero means it was successful. And then you have this, which returns 99, which is the column here. We can change this value to maybe one. We can do this again. And as you can see, it returns one. Now if I use GDB, I might put a breakpoint on the main function and I print run and go after it's been set. If I type now info v table int1, now you can see that this is a bit fishy, but now it's not a player get name or player get help, it's get custom help that's being called. What this is doing this is basically overriding this address right here. If I leave this in Okay, if I do it here at the table int1, as you can see, it's not changed. But after it's been set, now it's been changed. So this is how you do it. A cleaner way would be to actually just, after this is done, set back uh, the protection flags to what they, what they were before, because some anti-cheat will actually check if some memory that's not supposed to be writable has been made writable. But I'm just not going to cover that in this video. Uh, just for the end, I'm going to show you what happens if you don't align your pages, uh, your addresses. So here, instead, we just put, oh, actually, I shouldn't have to leave it there. So just put B table plus three. And the lane is, I think, it's in, yeah, eight. But if you do this, like, if you do it like this, um, I'm not. You have to crash some removing what's after, but now if you run it, it's going to return minus one and it's going to set an error no flag. And if you look into mProtect, if you want to read this error no flag, it's probably r invalid, basically e no mem, but it could refer to all of these. So, anyway, you just have to use this function or just make your own, but this is actually really short and it. It will be published, of course, on the GitHub for this video.